Wallace Thomas saying hairdressers amongst those who may be able to go back to work at the beginning of July. Uh, if online searches are anything to go by, there will be uh, a lot of demand. Searches, for instance, for home hair visits went up 600% in April alone. Joining us now from Kent is celebrity hairstylist James Johnson. Uh, James, a very good afternoon to you. Uh, we assume, don't we? Well, we assume these changes will happen. So. Uh, Hairstylists will be reopening and going back to work from the beginning of next month. And we assume, too, there's going to be huge pent up demand. I mean, it's going to be so busy for us, but obviously our main part is just making, making sure our clients are safe as long as we're safe as well. I think it's overdue and financially we're all ready to go back. You know, it's got to be a point where we've got to get the money coming in and paying our bills. James, how, how will you manage the demand? Will it be first come, first served? If, if you booked way back when, uh, then you'll go to the head of the queue. How, how will you manage it? I think it's going to be some unhappy people, but it's got to be first come, first serve. Um, just trying to get everyone sorted and back in. People have been waiting. People have got roots they need covering, haircuts. Let's get them sorted. Yeah. And I know you do home visits. So to talk to us about the precautions you'll need to put in place when you visit somebody in their, in their home. And then when you're working in a salon, I mean, we, clearly salons, like lots of other businesses, have had to spend a lot of money to make sure they are COVID compliant, the Perspex screens, all the rest of it. How will it work for you? I think like as a beauty industry person anyway, our um, health stuff and keeping stuff clean and sanitised is already higher. I think it's just reinforcing that we're keeping it super clean, super disinfected. Um, obviously now we have to wear gloves and uh, masks, maybe even aprons, and just to kind of keep things to a minimal in terms of contact and what we're spreading on. It's really important that when we do go back, because we have to go back, we're doing it in a safe manner. Yeah. And what do you think people will notice? I mean, as you say, as you move around people, I mean, can you, can you still engage people in conversation? Do you need to sort of face away from them? You, you know, you, the job itself obviously requires that you are, your hands on, you get close. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard. Luckily, a lot of hairdressers have mirrors, so we can talk into the mirror. But obviously, wearing a mask, that's kind of, that's hard as it is, letting them have a hairdryer on. So trying to talk over a hairdryer with a mask, it's going to be a challenge. But look, we've got to get back at some point and let's get things going because people need their hair done and people need to be paid. Yeah, I mean, just, just from the perspective, the business point of view on all this, how difficult a time has this been for you uh, and for other people in the industry? It's, it's been so hard. Obviously, we're one of the last to go back. I know hair, some people, isn't a priority, but to a lot of us, it is. It's, it's what pays our bills. And the government have been great in some aspects, but not to sound ungrateful, they haven't done as much as they probably could have done. And we're ready. You know, we can't, we can't survive just being at home waiting we need to get back and if it means we wear gloves and we wear masks and we do the right things properly, then we've got to do it. It's important just not for financially, but for our mental well-being. people looking good. It's all part of how we cope day to day. There's only so much we can do with having outgrown roots and split ends. Yeah. Do you, I mean, people have learned to cope uh, without paying for it. Um, I mean, do you think there will be long term because a reduction in demand from people because they, they've realised actually uh, they can get somebody at home to to watch a YouTube video rather than paying money to get it done professionally? I think it's that balance. Part of going to the salon is to be in that social aspect, um, mixing with people, having a chat with someone next to you. Obviously, there's going to be limited when we go back, but I think that's, that's the come in the long run. And I'm just pleased that people that have waited for the salon to open have been using like root cover-up powders, buy-in stuff to get the blow dries at home. Um, but I think they're all, they are desperate to get back and to get into the swing of things and to get that salon professional hair. Yeah, well, James Johnson, it's nice to talk to you and uh, best of luck when the reopening does happen. We think next month. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks for having me.